Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Guys, please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. I will appreciate. So today, I'm going to be reacting to Allah who will answer your door as long as you don't say this. Live reminder. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So this last Friday, um, I talked about the when. When is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to come? And particularly in the context of the ayah, am hasibatum an tadkhulul jannah, do you think that you will enter into jannah? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us through the various difficulties and to the point where the messenger and the believers that are with him say, Mata Nasrullah, when is the help of Allah? And verily the help of Allah is near. And I wanted to speak about this from a personal perspective in the sense that how do we deal with the question of when, meaning when I make dua, when is it going to be answered uh, You know, with our individual struggles and not necessarily the community struggles since that ayah was in the context of khandaq. And obviously these things are all uh, tie together and subhanAllah they even touch on different elements of faith they touch on different aspects of our creed if a person is in a situation where they're seeing a wicked person who seems to have everything in this world and then a person who is righteous and they are being oppressed uh, or they don't have anything in this world then that can start to uh, to, to uh, ruin their notions of how they understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love and how they understand the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proportions his mercy in this world in relation to the next. And so when it comes to dua, when it comes to supplication and a person that makes dua, you know, I want to actually start with what Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said. He said, Inni la ahmiru hamma al-ijaba. I do not concern myself with the burden of the answer to my dua. But he says, walakinni ahmiru hamma dua. I just concern myself with the ability to make dua. So I don't concern myself with the answer to the du'a, I just concern myself with the ability to make the du'a, with the ability to make that supplication in the first place. Why? Because as Ibn Ata'illah rahimahullah said, مَتَى أَطْلَقَ اللَّهُ لِسَانَكَ بِالطَّلَبِ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يُعْطِيَكَ That know that any time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows your tongue to move in asking him something, that that means he wants to give you something. And so there is no situation in which Allah will give you tawfiq will give you success to be able to make this dua, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to answer that dua for you. So don't you know, concern yourself with the way that it's going to be answered. Just concern yourself with the ability to make that dua in the first place. And that is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are driven to the ability to call upon Him. Now, with that being said, you make your dua. And as you supplicate, your supplication goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Alim, Al-Khabir. The most knowing, the most acquainted, Al-Hakim, the most wise, Al-Rahman, the most merciful. It goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have entrusted that supplication now to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah to answer you in a way that is best for you. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would either answer that dua as you asked him for it, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will block an evil, an equivalent evil, a calamity, as a result of that dua, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will delay the answer to that dua to the hereafter, to the day of judgment. And of course, on that day when you are rewarded, it is unlike the reward of this world. And a person would not would, would wish that none of their duas had the answer in this world when they see the answer in the hereafter, because that which was answered in this world perished along with this world. Whereas that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers in regards to the hereafter or in the hereafter remains for all of eternity. So you make that dua and you entrust that dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that you're calling upon, to answer it in a way that's best for you. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَعْجَلْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer every one of you so long as you don't become hasty. How do you become hasty? فَيَقُولْ دَعُوتُ فَلَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ لِي That a person would say, I called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he did not answer me. So long as a person does not say, I called upon Allah and he did not answer me. And another narration, the Prophet said, يَدْعُوا بِإِثْمْ أَوْ قَطِيعَةِ رَحِمْ 
uh, that a person would call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something sinful or with the severance of family ties. So the nature of what you're asking Allah for is forbidden. Uh, but in this regard, you've asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have taken all of the precautions and fulfilled all of the prerequisites to approaching Allah with that dua. Do not say, Da'utu falam yustajabli. I called upon Allah and He didn't answer me. He did not answer my dua. When you do that, no matter how the du'a has transferred, it's left your heart, it's left your tongue, it has gone to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu said, your Lord is too shy for you to raise your hands and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow those hands to come back down completely empty and unfulfilled. Allah is too shy. Allah is too shy, subhanAllah. He's too shy for you to make du'a and to come back empty handed. So you made that dua and you sent it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you say, Da'utu falam yustajabli. I called upon Allah and He did not answer me. At that point, no matter how the dua is operating, it becomes completely irrelevant and it becomes completely ineffective. It ruins the dua, it spoils the dua because you lose the essential component of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you're making that dua. So the Prophet said, do not be hasty and say, I called upon Allah and he didn't answer me. And another thing that's really important about this is subhanAllah to not let the shaitan tell you that the delay in the answer to your dua is some indication of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not loving you. You know, think about this. Who was more beloved to Allah than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Who does Allah love more than the Prophets, than Ibrahim alayhi salam, than Yusuf alayhi salam, than Ya'qub alayhi salam, right? We're talking about Abraham and Jacob and Joseph and Ayyub alayhi salam, Job. Who does Allah love more than these people, than the Prophets of Allah? Yet how many times do we see that they called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the answer to their dua did not come for decades, did not come for decades? Is that because Allah did not love them? Of course not. You know, we would never say that because we know that this is the most beloved of Allah's creation to him, right? Of course not. But it's something else. It's something else. And so it might be that you see two people that make dua and this person is answered right away and the other person is delayed and Allah loves the one who was delayed more. Allah loves the one who was delayed more. Why? Because it may be that subhanAllah, as you are turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua, that Allah is increasing you. And He certainly is when you turn towards Him. Allah is increasing you in His favor, in His love. Allah is increasing you in your good deeds. Allah is elevating your status in the hereafter. Because a dua wal ibadah, dua is worship. And so all that you are gaining aside from what you are specifically asking for, in the process of that dua is certainly increasing you in Allah's love, is certainly increasing you in Allah's love. And what more could you want than that, right? What is greater than that? As you're going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is increasing you in His love as well as, as well as responding to you in a way that is most befitting to you. And subhanAllah, that is a precious, jewel that you know that that we take every time we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua aside from whatever it is that we're asking from him the inkisar the brokenness that we show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the humility that we show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the waking up at night to pray for what we're praying for right in in the last third of the night or whenever it is all of that is bringing us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and closeness to Allah is greater than whatever it is that we're asking him for so the Prophet ﷺ said, do not be amongst those people that send a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is too shy to reject it, but then they render that dua ineffective themselves by closing the possibility, by saying that that dua is not going to be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that dua has not been answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leave the answer to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, imagine on the Day of Judgment, those du'as that Allah delayed for you to answer you there and to give you a bounty that was too great for this world and to give you in a place that is everlasting rather than a place that is temporary. And he says, subhanAllah, this was greater than whatever it is that I could have wanted in this dunya. 
And the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is certainty and elevation, whether it is in this life or the next. So again, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not say, da'utu falam yustajab li. I called upon Allah and he did not answer me. Whether it was Musa alayhi salam making dua against the Fir'aun or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa against his enemies or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for the guidance of certain people in Uhud or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking Allah for relief or Ayyub alayhi salam calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or Ya'qub alayhi salam calling upon Allah waiting for his son, or Yusuf alayhi salam calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting for relief from the prison, or whatever situation he was in, all of these situations teach us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer the dua of the one that he loves, but on a time and in a way that is most befitting to that love and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-wadud knows what's best for us so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those that are beloved to him and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those that are always turned back to him in dua in a state of brokenness and humility and in a way in which we are always elevated in this life and in the next may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in jannat al-firdaus Allahumma amin ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم آمين جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I love these uh, guys' videos and the message that he delivers. I feel like sometimes it's all about mindset. Your mind has to be in the right place. Have a clean mind when you're going into prayer or whatever it is that you're going into. When you speak those words to God, mean them. Don't just say, okay, it's time to pray, let me pray. No, mean whatever word you say, word for word. Mean each and every word you say out there. As it goes out to God, it comes to be because you have faith. But once you sit down and say, oh, that was too much for me to ask. That is too, I don't deserve this. Then it destroys the whole purpose of you actually praying or saying whatever he said to God. Otherwise, this was self-explanatory. If you guys have any contributions, comment down below. Your contribution is always welcome. If you want me to react to anything, uh, suggest it down below by giving me the name or the link, and I'll be more than glad to check it out. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.